why why discuss this? Well, when I listen to just the hand when I listen to just the handful of these, I notice something. There are areas hearkening to the New Apostolic Reformation, the hyper charismatic even today that are echoing back to the second century, the 1700s, the 1800s, the Irvingites, back to Montanus. There, there's little things there, here and there, that are echoing back to that. And it's there's there's zeal there, both in the second century and in the in the past several hundred years, and then up until today, there's zeal. And I applaud zeal. You know, zeal is not a bad thing. Jesus encouraged the church in Revelation to be zealous, that there, that we are to have a, a passion and desire for the Word of God, for God, to for righteousness, for, for truth, for, for the, the things that, that are pleasing to God. We are to be zealous for those things. The problem comes when zeal is misguided, and it's an error. And sad to say, in just the clips that we heard today, it seems that people are zealous, but it's misguided. And it's leading people into error, if not false doctrine. Massive numbers and massive popularity is um, touted in these movements, even today, that where people have said, well, you know, those that aren't in the charismatic uh, movement, they're just jealous and, and they don't, you know, we have the, we have greater movements, we have better worship, we have bigger churches. And sometimes people tend to think, well, because people have more followers on social media, they have bigger churches, they have more popular worship, they have massive numbers, they have all these things going for them. Some people make the false equivalence that that means that God's approval or validation is on that. And that's not what that means at all. Big numbers do not mean that that's God's approval, the stamp of approval, and it does not mean that God's in the midst of that. There could be strong delusion going on. There could be a massive error that's going on because of false teaching. People are having yielding over to vain imaginations. They're yielding over to fleshly carnal desires. They're not wanting to be biblically discipled. They don't want to address sin in their lives. They don't want to repent. They don't want to understand what it means to be a true disciple of Christ and to walk in sanctification and to be under the authority of the Word of God and be in a biblically sound church. And they're always looking some for that next Hi, that next thing that the conference gives or this leader gives or this anointing or whatever they can get. Big numbers don't mean anything. That does not mean that God approves of what's going on. You know, one thing that I began to to consider when I was thinking about this topic is we see people throughout the ages that lay claim and credit to the Holy Spirit saying something. And I just want to reiterate that it's a big deal to say that God is saying something through you. I think that that has really been diminished. The reverence towards God is gone when saying something like that. And people say, oh, I just missed it. It's okay. I'm practicing hearing the voice of God. You're not going to find that in Scripture. There's nowhere in there where it tells us to practice hearing the voice of God, to tune into a specific frequency, to make sure that we're hearing things the right way or that Today, we're under the dispensation of grace, and so people can miss it today. There can be fallible prophets, and just because they're fallible doesn't mean they're false, right? I mean, they can, they can miss it because we're under grace, man. Come on, we're under grace, and they're fallible. Well, the Old Testament prophets were fallible. They were sinful men in need of a Savior. You're going to sit there and tell me because how the Holy Spirit operated in them differently and didn't com- fully abide in them like he does in the New Testament believers, that he wasn't operating in them to where they had to be 100% accurate, and that's changed somehow. So we're going to give a, a a mulligan, I guess. I don't do golf, but we're going to give a mulligan to somebody. Ah, oh, it's okay. You know, they missed it. They're still growing. They're still learning. Rather than teaching them the importance of reverencing God and to make and to understand, when you say you speak for God, you need to understand that the the standards in Scripture have not changed. They have not changed between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And saying that you are the Holy Spirit, that you're speaking for the Holy Spirit, let alone that you are the Holy Spirit, these are dangerous things. These are things that we should not take lightly. And we most certainly... 